So, as most of my long-term readers on the blog will know, I'm a fan of finding out what's happening beyond the finesse. And that got me thinking, what are the different demi-humans like when you go past the, uh, you know, the, the western boundary of the finesse? And that's what I want to talk about today on Greyhawk Ragnar. So here we have everyone's favorite map, the uh, map of Oerk from uh, Dragon Annual Number 1. Please do not flood my comments with how much you don't like the map. It's canon. It's what we got. You just got to have to learn to deal with it. Um, but this is, this is where we are. And the Flaness is up here in the upper right corner. And this is where we find the normal hum uh, demi-humans that we're used to. Elves, gnomes, dwarves, halflings. Okay, so that's... And, and the hybrids of, of a few of those. So, you know, that's, that's where we are. Um, but that doesn't tell us what is the status of demi-humans as we go further and further west. You know, in the, in the in Zahindia, um, in the Celestial Imperium, as we get over to the Empire of Lin, and, and so forth. We, we don't really have a great uh, idea of anything that's out there, uh, at least in the gold box and the folio and, and, and from the ashes and so forth. We do get a little more... Uh, information as time goes on, however, um, to the point that we do indeed know that there are the traditional demi-humans that we know out here in this corner. So to give you an idea of just what's, what's going on there, um, if this would cooperate and actually let me move it, um, this map might give you a better idea of what's going on where we have the Flaness over here, and we've got Dwarves and Elves and such over here. So there's two options, right? Either they migrated across the Solnor Ocean this way, because this is the other part of that, or they traveled overland over this way. That's pretty much our, our choices. And the question is, how can we figure out which one is right? Because it does have implications for the status of demi-humans in the middle. Okay, so that's the, that's the stage that we have set. And in that upper northwest corner, the way we know that there are demi-humans there is thanks to the Chainmail game that came out in 2000 or 2001. Um, we know that there are, in, in, in the Chainmail game, that whole region is called the Sundered Empire. And we know that there are demi-humans there because it's in the, it's in the books. The entire uh, name, the Sundered Empire, refers to an elvish empire that ruled most of that part of the continent. Um, there's also something called Mordengard, which is a dwarven realm. We know that there are other uh, demi-humans in there. It's a, it's a fairly typical um, uh, fantasy European medieval setting. Um, it was, of course, made specifically to fight skirmish games in, you know, so there's a, little, there's a few little conventions that it has that are different than the, um, than the rest of the, uh, than the rest of Oerk, especially the Flaness. Uh, but it's a neat setting in and of itself. There's a lot of different factions going on, and there's, you know, there's some intrigues and stuff, so I think it would actually make a really good um, fantasy setting in, in and of itself for role-playing. Uh, you know, over and above uh, what it was designed for, which was for the skirmish games. <coughs> so we know that there are demi-humans on this side of Oerk, and we know that there are demi-humans on this side of Oerk. And the question is, how did they get from here to there? Did they go over the ocean, or did they cross over land? Um, now, we do have one piece of data that we can plug in here, uh, which is from Oriental Adventures. Uh, Oriental Adventures uh, was f uh, famously published in 1985, towards the end of Gygax's run. Uh, there are a lot of stories about its creation. Um, that uh, there was uh, one author contracted to do it. Uh, he turned in a manuscript that ended up not getting used at all. Uh, another guy came in and did and presented this manuscript, which 
Gygax felt wasn't as good as the other one. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on. I mean, it was the end of Gygax's term at, at TSR, and it showed. Um, there's a, it's a flawed book. Let's not put it. You know, there's, there's no other better way to put it. But um, it does give us an insight into what uh, how how demi humans are handled in an in a uh, oriental setting, China, uh, especially Japan. Um, where it says, uh, characters in an oriental AD&D adventure need not be humans. Caratur, which at this point, uh, well, I should say, at this point it was kind of its own thing. It then, they were, talk, they were talking about putting it in Greyhawk. It ended up getting put into Forgotten Realms. Um, is a land of exotic customs and exotic creatures. Characters can be members of any one of four races. Human, uh, Hengeo... Hengiokai, which are intelligent animals. Um, Koroboruku, which are kind of oriental dwarves. Um, or spirit folk, which are kind of half uh, fae, half human. Um, and those are, those are the options. So notably, you don't have um, real dwarves, as we see in the Flaness. You don't see um, elves, halflings, gnomes. Those, you know, the, the normal... Uh, things that you do see in the uh, Flaness and in the Sundered Empire. Uh, so that that's another piece of, of data to slip in there. So we have this area, I mean, assuming that we go with this. I mean, nothing says that this necessarily pertains to Greyhawk. Um, you know, there, there is a, a reference or two uh, to uh, Caratur in Fate of Istis. Uh, as being part of Greyhawk, but after that it was very, very firmly uh, placed in the Forgotten Realms uh, with its own box sets and stuff like that. So, um, you know, despite the, the one or two um, uh, uh, mentions uh, in, in that one module, it's, it's, it's very firmly not Greyhawk. Um, although that gives a, another idea, maybe there is a land here called Caratur that doesn't relate to that, they just have the same name something to think about. Um, but anyway, uh, so there's a couple of different ways to handle this. We know, obviously, we can go across the ocean, or we can go overland. Now, if we go overland, we have to pass through um, the Backlunish lands, which is no problem, because that's already part of the Flaness. Uh, it goes a little further off the map, but, you know, not nothing significant. Um, then there's Shaofeng, or the Celestial Imperium, which is their fantasy China. Um, now, in... Um, my own uh, work <clears throat> in Zahindia, which is available on the uh, on my blog as a free set of articles, um, I in fact do have elves and dwarves and gnomes and halflings that are just fantasy India uh, versions of those, um, and th I posit that they simply, if, if they began in the Flaness, they migrated westward. Um, the reason I don't have them going over the Solnor Ocean, um, also called the Mir Titanicum uh, on the map, is a, there's a couple reasons. Um, I don't prefer that. It, it seems rather limiting, um, especially if we have um, demi-human races that are so very long-lived. Uh, it seems that um, for them to have arrived relatively late when such voyages were possible. Uh, it seems, uh, just, it, it doesn't seem to map in my mind with the, I mean, I guess you could have a, a set of demi-humans in the uh, Sundered Imperium, in the Sundered Empire, that were all young elves and young dwarves, um, relatively. But you don't get that impression from the material in, in, that deals with the Sundered Empire. I mean, the, 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 the Sundered Empire itself goes back, you know, thousands of years. So, um, and it doesn't say anything about having great seafaring abilities. Uh, another thing we have to factor in there is that uh, if we want to place Frank Menster's Aquaria on O Earth, as it was originally intended, um, that goes smack dab in the middle of the Solar Ocean. So people could, in theory, sail to there and then sail from there westward to the other side of Oerk. It's a possibility. Um, but, uh, you know, barring anything that is particularly canonical, uh, from you know, which is not likely in, in the near future, as they don't seem to be interested in publishing that much Greyhawk stuff, um, 
it does it you, you could really go either way uh, I personally prefer the idea that there was an overland migration of these creatures of these races um, I uh, would want to uh, then have versions of elves and dwarves and halflings and gnomes um, relevant to those cultures in the different uh, as you go westward. So you know, there's the uh, the the pseudo Egyptian land of Kemet. You know, you could do the same thing there. Uh, in in Shaofeng, you could have Chinese versions uh, of those creatures uh, you know, of those of those monsters. It also um, uh, would explain how monsters are uh, s sort of ubiquitous. Certain monsters are ubiquitous across the finesse. Um, you know, some of them engage in these in these migrations, so that we would know that these migrations are at least possible. Um, you know, we know for a fact that there are orcs in uh, uh, on the other side of the Backlunish re uh, realm because there's this thing called Orc Reich. Uh, again, you might not like the name. Uh, fans have come up with alternate names. But it's there. It's this empire of orcs, essentially. Um, so we know that they made it at least halfway over. And then there's orcs, of course, of course and, and gnolls and, and so forth, again, in the Sundered Empire. So we know that some intelligent races did make that journey. Um, and it stands to reason, then, that the, the demi-human side would also have made that journey. So... Um, you know, and, in, and in my case, uh, I, you know, I, I like the idea of uh, maybe adding one or two unique races. Uh, so maybe there aren't gnomes, per se, in uh, uh, Zahindia or Xiaofeng, but there are elves, dwarves, and halflings. You know, maybe, uh, but maybe in Zahindia there's another unique fantasy India demi-human race. Uh, and in Xiaofeng there's a, a, a unique Chinese demi-human race and so forth. Uh, just like in the Flaness, that would make the gnomes the unique demi-human race there. And dwarves and elves and halflings are the ones that migrate. Or you could, you know, shake it up any way you wanted to. But I kind of like the idea of, A, certain races, especially the ones that are in the core books of the Player's Handbook and uh, DM's Guide, are, are kind of found everywhere. But there could also be things that are culturally specific um, or regionally specific across the, the the continent that you know that didn't make the big migrations, uh, halflings would be a, a you know another candidate for not the, the, those are the ones that didn't migrate across. Uh, maybe some of them did go you know to Aquaria and then uh, made the relatively shorter journey uh, back towards the east across the Solnor Ocean or the Mare Titanicus. Who knows? Um, all of that stuff is not uh, nailed down at all. You know this. This must be speculation. Um, so anyway, that's that, those are some thoughts on, on the different ways it can be done. My solution is an overland migration um, with the major races found just about everywhere in their distinct um, subgroups, you know, like you have... Um, uh, uh, valley elves and, and so forth in the Flaness, you could have a, a different kind of elf sub-race in Zahindia or Xiaofeng and so forth. Um, I kind of like that idea and, uh, you know, it does jive with uh, what we know in the real world about human migration. You know, people do migrate wherever they're able to. Uh, migration by ship as opposed to overland is much rarer um, because it happens much later with the development of seafaring so anyway uh let me know what you think in the comments except about the map and <laughs> uh let me know if you've ever done anything beyond the flaness uh what you did and if you ever would do anything beyond the flaness how you would handle your demi-human races so anyway hope you enjoyed this one let me know in the comments and i will talk to you later thanks for watching today's video please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel Below you'll find links to my Patreon, which helps make these videos possible. You'll also find the web store, where you can buy my books, and my blog, where you'll find all sorts of free downloads and other articles. Thanks, and have a great day.